go with what we have here, which is good. We're not packed like sardines and whoever shows up. They had three war out there. They I don't know. They drifted away. They'll come back if they really, really want to. I'm John. KB1MGI. Now you can leave that open. We'll let the air go through. Uh, my son Craig, KC1CGS, and we have two more. KB1 L LQC and D. They're on California now. They uh, they work with SpaceX, so. Um, but their hands were involved in the, in the stuff too. First of all, we're just gonna see. There's a lot of faces here. Some I know on this side and don't know. We'll start with you. And your call sign is. Hilo Charlie One Bravo X Ray Bravo. And you're from where? East Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Very good. KB One JKA Manchester. New Hampshire. No, no Connecticut. KB One TXM Monty from Connecticut. KC1CRS and from Greenfield, Massachusetts. And one VY from Tokyo, Hampshire. Bill AB1AB from Ellis in Southern New Hampshire. I'm KB1SMB and I'm from Wakefield, North Carolina. Oh, no. My name's Irving, N1DCC from Lowell, Massachusetts. And the one and only? Uh, Bob, W1FDR. Bob and I probably would very into this fox hunting and um, we have so much fun doing it we just pick on each other all the time and have so much fun picking on each other and being on the air and everything else doing it so um, and we rich rich has been out with us down doing a few fox hunt stuff and uh, come find some so this is going to be very basic um, how fox hunting works and uh, it's direction finding, um, it develops your skills in finding where a signal's coming from because you, a signal has to be coming from one place, a certain area, but it can be bouncing off an object that reflects that signal which messes everybody up. Basic equipment, all you need is your portable radio to track any signal and you can do this when you hear the repeater on the air. You can sit there, what we call body fade. You can find out what direction that transmitting antenna is from by just using your portable radio. And I'll get into body fade. The small Yagi antennas, this is the little handheld one. I mount my portable on it, and I have attenuation so I can turn it to drop the signal down. Also, to the tape measure Yagi, which everybody kind of knows of. You bring it through the woods, and it's it bounces, it doesn't break, but this is good for long distances. It gives you that one direction you'd like to head into to start going. How we, how we do ours, we do it different ways. I will tell, put an email out and say, um, I hid my fox in a town surrounding the town of Westford. It's in a town, in a, one of those surrounding towns, and Bob will be the first one to jump out of bed in the morning and say, honey, I'll be back in a little while, and it's like, by supper time, he's home. <laughs> and he goes off, and he'll start driving, and he picks up the signal, and he just starts getting a direction, getting louder, getting softer, and in his car, just driving along, hearing that signal, and he'll start turning left, turning right, he loses the signal to find that real far distance one. There's times I'll say, yes, it's in Chelmsford. Uh, I'll say it's in South South Temple to make it easier. And then there's times I just say, is that a conservation area? This is the name of it. And this is where it's located. So people just drive to that parking lot, and that's where they're going to start from. Um, the best thing is, you know, these conservation areas online have maps. If you want to look at one so you don't get lost. We've done it to where we've gone very deep in the woods looking for these foxes, which gets very confusing. All right, just um, 100, 200 feet in from the parking lot. Yes? So how do you know what frequency it's on? Do you set the frequency? Yes, I set the, 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 um, it, the national fox hunting frequency is 146.565. That's what they've come up with, you know, to do it. But you can do it on any frequency. A lot of people may use, we have people that use that frequency just to chit-chat simplex. But with the low power, I don't really bother them, but we can hear them when we're out fox hunting, talking, and they're like 15 miles away, but we're still picking them up, and it kind of messes you up a little bit. Um, but you learn to it. It makes it fun. And I have I pick other frequencies that nobody's on. I, I do the, um, I'll do it on 70 centimeter. 
And, and you are? Call. Mark, Schenectady, New York. Schenectady, New York. I've driven to there many times. So when you're lost out, we're not repeating where everybody else is. <laughs> Welcome. Um, small Yagi antennas points in the direction. Um, and you can also do this with we, we haven't done it where somebody's gotten in their car and just been, hey, you've got to come find me, I'm KB1MGI, blah, 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 or I'm all, and you sit someplace, and people do this all over. Bob did that. That's WZ, remember, in Lowell. He put it in his uh, pickup truck. Oh, he did it, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, you know, it's like the ones that we read about, they'll, they'll do it on some Saturday morning, and you've got an hour to figure it out. Usually they park at a restaurant, and then they go have breakfast. If you can find me, you can join me for breakfast, you know, by coming down and tracking me down. Um, out west, when they do this in the vast areas, they will start off and you've got to start going 60 miles in one direction. I hear the signal and you could be driving all day long. But they have that territory out there. Um, there's Craig a few years back. And Andy box box is under that pile of wood. They we cable them, they're in like an army, old army ammo box and waterproof, they're great. I'll show you a picture of the area, but when I first went out looking for these, I'd be walking around going, I know I'm here, but then I, I learned, okay, just look around the base of every tree. It's going to be hidden here someplace under a couple sticks. You might just see the antenna sticking up because it's done so well. Um, ADRF is a worldwide sport that Bob did a few years back over at Blue Hills in Quincy. And people from around the world do this in competition for hot, for speed, or just to get it done. And um, you're given a map, you got a compass, and you start going. They use AM frequency. And Bob, a little chat on how you went and when you did yours? Well, the, yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was the Nationals. They were held here in, in uh, Blue Hills and up in Lynn Woods, and they had a three-day event. And they uh, do two-meter AM, and they also do 80 meters AM. And they uh, use a loop antenna for 80 meters. And it's a little handheld rig. And the idea is that uh, they, you use the, uh, the broad side of the loop to do direction finding. And as you start getting closer, you turn to 90 degrees, and you actually get a null on the antenna. So at that point, you can use it to, to, to zero in. And, yeah, and, and they have a, a marked station like that, so you don't have to go looking for that little hidden thing. All of a sudden, oh, I see the, I'll see this flag that's white and red and everything, and you go up and you have electronic little punch pad. Yep, a little, little and, USB. And it plugs in, it records when you get back, they plug it into a computer and it records your times. And there are people that will run 100 miles an hour doing this, and they're, they're very athletic, and they they just get into it, it's like an Olympic sport. Um, as you can see, it. this is one of my boxes, mammal boxes, and I basically put a tag in, I only got one phone call, I put my phone number on it, I can't even see it here, it's that foggy, but I, it basically says this is an FCC um, license um, tracking something or other device. It's harmless, um, and this is my call sign and my phone number. One, one, I got one phone call, a, a kid was out geocaching, I thought I found the geocache, but it isn't. <laughs> what is this thing? He's calling me on the cell phone. Wow, I never heard of such a thing. Um, this is the equipment inside. Here's the little pitcon that you were asking about. Yep. The little controller. Batteries are in there. I got a little um, Bofang plugged into it and made the, make the connections up. And they, they're great. Um, the trick when you go hide these, don't put them in plain sight. People can get really weird about these things. Okay, they'll see it and they'll call the bomb squad. And it's happened before. We've heard some stories that you know somebody thought it was a bomb. Today's day. No, not the bridges. No, right. So I usually go off a path and I'll just get kind of almost out of sight of the path and I'll place it. And no, people walking up the path are never going to see this thing in the woods because 99.9% .9 of everybody that goes walking down the trails. They walk on the trails unless they have to go to battle. Or they're geocaching. Oh, they're geocaching, but the geocache is probably, you can start seeing those worn out spots. And it's good to look about 
look up on geocaching.com if you're going to go to an area and you can look on the map and they say, okay, I don't want to put one there because there's a hidden geocaching if anybody doesn't know this. You're choosing your GPS coordinates to go find a little treasure box. And that's, that's fun also. And it's, it's similar to this where you're just looking at your GPS and say, hey, you're here within 10 feet. Where is it? And that's using something hidden also. It's a little Tupperware box. It's waterproof. This is the little Bionics, little um, 15 milliwatt transmitter runs on a 9 volt battery. You can run up to 12 volts. It's very small. Um, you can hide those, but we put them in boxes and secure them so they don't get stolen and wet. But um, Bionics, you just type in Bionics in the, in the computer and you'll get to their website. The PitCom that we were talking about earlier is a little kit controller that you have fun putting together. It's very easy. And um, little water, the little box that comes in and the connectors. This is a Doppler. Doppler is this unit right here. And you have four, um, five antennas on, on the roof of your car, little magnets. And they're number one, two, three, four in the center one. You lay it out on the roof of your vehicle. And this is for mobile tracking in this picture here. And once you tune it, you tune it to a, a signal in front of you. So you get a portable, someone in the car. And we took it out one day, Bob and I went, and we tuned it to be in the front. And we started driving down to do one of our other friends in Concord. Yeah, we were in Concord. It, it and it worked. worked. It worked. It, and it starts, it will hear it. You'll hear it, and the light will light up. And it'll start popping. Bee, bee, and it'll start, okay, you start driving towards that, and that, that light will turn in front of you, go and bubble, and go on. And all of a sudden you go by, and all of a sudden it's, the, the, the light's going, hey, you want past it because it's back that way. Um, they, they work very well. And you can just drive in, look down at it. Okay, I'm driving. Okay. Bob does it by ear. And he does it like he's texting and driving at the same time. He'll hold up his screen. And he's driving down the road at 100 miles an hour trying to find it. Um, just to jump back, one of the reasons we got into fox hunting out here was five, six, seven years, ten years ago, I forget it was, we had a lot of problems on repeaters. Anybody having issues with people doing keying up on the repeaters? Some. Okay. That's how we got involved in this. And we, we, we did this, this came into training us to find the issues out there. And all those issues were taken care of by the powers to be. And it's pleasant out there now. It's very pleasant. And now that we do this on the repeaters and we talk, hey, we're doing a fox hunt, it's all here. We deter it. it did, people don't even want to mess around this area no more because they know about us. And if they want to cause problems, we're going to find them. Very quickly, we, if we do two points, we're going to be within a, a half a mile of their first location if one of them get a direction. So everybody's learned, and it's like, OK, I listen, there's no more messing around. These guys know how we're going to be fine. Even somebody had actually left the, uh, a pillow or something on top of their... We had that uh, happen in Connecticut, yep. and it just keyed up the repeater for, I don't know, days. We called and right to their house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and they found it. Within, yeah. Once they got going, it was like uh, right to it. Not even an hour. It didn't even take an hour. Yep. And um, it, it, it works, and it's so much fun to do. Um, and it took the distraction away of finding it. This is another little, I think I have in a bag, another one thing from Bionics that does APRS also, that you can turn it into the same function with DTMF controls, but it's the MT-1000 that they have out here. I started playing with it. Um, attenuation. I have one here that's, you can't buy that. That was a, you could buy the, assemble kit you can't buy it but they give you instructions and in all the components to make and got the little box over at uh, electronics plus here next door in Littleton but you flip the switches keeps attenuating attenuating when you're getting closer and closer and closer this one here is offset and you just turn the dial and it'll melt it out and then you go okay yeah I can go in this direction because don't don't waste your money on it all you're gonna do is just the no. Right. So if it's on like 146, 565, or 570, 575, you keep getting yeah. close. I, I have a list of that. Because oh, okay. yeah, I was going to ask, what are the necessary pieces of equipment or like the primary? And, um, just, okay. your, just your portable. Okay. This is another antenna. It's a TOTA. 
It's similar to this. This is a little kit. One that works on a battery. And the only problem is this. It can, the signal can be coming this way or that way. You don't know. Okay, and I have a little, these are my sons a few years ago testing this. Okay, Brent's just trying to find you on the input. He's uh, testing out a uh, direction uh, DF antenna he um, just built. So, Brent, you got to come here. Right there. Turn that up. This is one of the first times they were using it, and it just the signal's louder, softer, and it was coming from. Okay, we're up, we're up by Chunkwood High School, actually, we're in the field, so um, we got a nice wide open. But we just we just work AO51 and uh, and SO50 in the field too. He's talking about they just worked a couple satellites, amateur satellites that go through space. They have a little repeater on it, and you can talk to them with a little Yagi antenna and a portable. They're doing some AMSAT talks later on, and you can talk halfway across the country by beaming it up. I didn't know you had a cat, actually. So, is he looking for the lab signal or the quiet signal? I was trying to figure that out. With the, uh, it looked like a tool with a beam. Where's yeah, it's tool. It's, it's the same as this thing, but just it's set up differently. Let's make was sure. looking for a null there? Yeah, he was just trying to get that high where it was canceling out the signal, but you didn't know if it was left or right. Um, oh, he's looking at the repeater. Yeah, broadside to that stick. Yeah, it's 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 going to be. It's the same thing as if these were vertical. The signal's either coming that way, coming from that way. And it's tough. Um, this is the little Yagi. That this is. Um, Casey went AJJ's, he was out and he took a picture when he was walking in the trail and he was looking for the, for the signal. Um, Tim, Tim does it just now, he just goes out with a portable. Tim likes to do it at night. <laughs> Kids are going to bed, he goes out and he goes wandering, he's got a little headlamp on, he goes wandering around in the woods at night. I'm surprised the police haven't got a hold of him yet. Or a skunk. A skunk, yes. Um, this is what happens with a Yagi. You're, when you're pointing the lobe in one direction, your main lobe is your strongest signal. Okay? The back lobe will pick up a signal also. Okay? And you've got the little tiny main loops, the lobes on the sides, they're like little fake ones. They're not as strong, but you want always the strongest signal. When you hear a signal with a Yagi and you're pointing an antenna, oh, it's this way. Turn around and go opposite and make sure it's not even stronger that way. You can, oh, I got the signal, okay? You start going, how come it's not, it's getting weaker? Why, why, why? Always turn around and make sure that's the weak signal, that's the strong signal, and now you know which way to go. On that tape measure, Yagi, how broad is the main lobe? It depends on the strength of the signal. It can be, well, you, got, you learn it. I mean, how far can you swing before it's, it really drops? You know, it's a, it's the same antenna. Everybody, one guy designed it. I think it's a W two somewhere, and uh, it really does it even two to one four six. He, he kind of made a mistake <laughs> and it built the same antenna, so it's really all off beam where it should be. But the 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 beam width is actually if you're far enough away, it's really good. Because, I mean, if you're a couple miles away or, or beyond, the you, direction allergy is... When you're good. up close, it doesn't work really yeah, that you, well. You, you, because you, the antenna's exposed no matter which direction, because it could be hidden 20 feet away from you. And this doesn't know the difference. Well, you're picking up the side lobes. Yeah, you're picking up all the side lobes. The front, you can't really tell the difference. That's when we'll talk, I'll talk about off, stepping off the frequency to make it receive a lot worse. A little story here. This is Bob. This is the famous red SUV. The red suburban. Door to one thirteen. It's time to be embarrassed. This is the police radio from the town of Bill Ricker. 
you check the area in front of Manning State Forest? Caller reports a red SUV parked at the entrance. He thought it was suspicious. Saw a mail party get out with electronic equipment and a large antenna. <laughs> Gets a little better. I should have shot the, t the the time in this, but it was minutes between all the transmissions on that. So one of the uh, other gates leading into it. At the entrance to the state forest, caller reports a red SUV parked at the entrance. I caught an email about this, so I went searching for the recordings. Somebody, a couple people heard it live when it was there. Caller, please show me in the area. Excuse me, sir. Caller, so, when they tased me, though. Yeah, yeah, but it it is suspicious when you so see... So, vehicle parked at the entrance or in the parking lot at this time, all water circle the area. So, he doesn't see anything because he went to the main entrance and bought his parked down the street a little ways. So it is suspicious when you when you see this. I call that his old snow disc when he was a little kid. Okay, it, it must have been a surprise when you see it. Be advised, we did get a call from somebody indicating that they suspected it may be a ham radio operator going into the woods. <laughs> what? Let's see what he said. Want me to, or I won't be walking in the woods. Uh, they want me to let me know. I won't be walking in the woods. <laughs> There's some strange guy out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Walking around in the woods. And um, the, the reason this came down to everybody knowing. One thirteen to Maybe we'll just make it shorter. Yeah. Um, Bob has a vanity plate. On it is that vehicle from the down the road. Uh, plate number when you're ready. The reason we all knew it was him because it says. Uh, Bravo, Oscar, Mike, Alpha. It's Mike Alpha. Alpha. So that's Bob's vanity plate from his company. And uh, we all know it was Bob out there, so that's the famous. Uh, like this, we talked before, these are the fox hunting frequencies. That's national. So there's ways of looking at it. We set up the radio with the fox hunting frequency. You start off at a distance away. Okay, I have a direction where it is. I'm going there. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Or it gets weaker. You're going to take a right or a left and get yourself lined up to track down that signal. It's good if you use the map and you said, okay, it's that way, and you know, you position the map and you drew a pencil line, and you went right or left of that signal, don't go towards it first, and you found another signal, and you said, okay, it's that way. You draw that same line, and you, those lines will cross. And it's gonna be pretty close, unless it's a reflected signal off a building a water tank or something. A general area, and you can look and say, okay, yep, there's a conservation land there, and I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go right to that place. Or if you're looking for a signal that somebody has a stuck radio in their house, oh, they, you know, I think so and so lives down there, it must be coming from their house, you know, when you drive down, yeah, it's getting louder, 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 and you find their house, that's how we find it. You set your radio up, and you go five off, just keep going away from that main frequency that's always being transmitted. Yes. What what if the like if it's a, a radio that's stuck? What if it's in like an apartment complex? I mean, how specific? Well, we've not had to do an indoor one yet. I want to try to do that. Okay. You can just take your handheld yeah. and take the antenna off, and so you, you walk just, around. You just have the, the we'll, handheld. We'll alone. yeah. You walk into the building. We'll, I'll, I'll show you, you with the body fade in, in a little bit. Okay. But you have your portable. You just take your antenna off, and if you're close enough to the signal, they're still going to hear it. I see. It's, it's going to get the closer you get to it, the clearer it's going to be getting. You could actually walk from the hallways of an apartment building, and all of a sudden it's like you're off frequency. It's right behind this door in this apartment, and you might look up. It's another ham that lives there. And he, he's, the microphone on his lapel mic is key, but a lot of times the radios, if you, if you put a timeout in them, which is really good. The third harmonic 
is you multiply whatever frequency is being used by three, and you come up with a seven centimeter frequency. And it gets you, it's a mirror image of the frequency you're hearing. It's a lot weaker, you gotta be closer to find it. And it helps out. And then you can go to the fifth harmonic, which you, you don't do fifth anymore. Bob does, SWB goes, he goes to the fifth harmonic. He has a scanner or something that will go up in the 1200s. And he will just needle point that thing and just keep walking because he has that little thing frequency and there's no reflections. Um, so, but you can, you know, you can use any frequency you want. I, I've got the one that's out here is on 144.565 that's hitting out here. Press the tone two. You see the signs up. Key two, and it activates that transmitter I have hidden out in the woods, not far from the paths and wherever the close to the parking lots, wherever it is. Um, and it'll run for 15 minutes and shut off, and then you gotta do it again. How much of a delay between? 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Thank you. This is long distance Yagi finding that Craig and I did one time when we were, we were going. <coughs> we went, went out a couple miles, and we stopped in the car, and we heard the box, and we were taking readings. And it basically told us it was in this area of town. This is the same way the forest fire towers find fires in the forest. They'll see smoke. They'll call the next fire tower down. Hey, can, do you see smoke coming up? Yeah, what's your line? Those lines cross. That's where it is, within a reasonable distance. That's how they find their fires. Same thing with the radio signal. You can't hide from a radio signal. It's always there. Um, this is Tim, KC1AJJ. When he goes out, he has his phone tracking him on APRS. And he, when he walks around, it, it, he sends this to me, and he'll tell me different reports of he's on the third harmonic. And he finally found the fox when he was walking around. And he was getting different until he finally zoomed in on it, walking around in the woods. And that was just his breadcrumb trail that he was um, going on. Body fading. The most simplest thing you can do, you just need your radio. You can use the antenna, okay? When you hear, you can do it with your repeater because if it's up being on, if you want to just find the um, direction of your repeater, you know where it is and you want to play with it, you either go off frequency of the repeater that you, you're still hearing it, it's static and stuff, you can hold it against your body, okay, and you just turn in a slow circle, and your body absorbs the signal, but it doesn't allow it to pass through you to get to the antenna. You'll be hearing it, and all of a sudden it just goes, it gets very soft, and then when you come around, it gets louder again. And whenever it's against you, it's coming from behind you. Okay, and I'll show a diagram of that. So you you listen to hear it, looking for the the weakest signal, and it fades away, or, or it goes goes down and out, and that it's coming from behind you. And this is a diagram as this is the person that's his radio, the operator standing there. He was turning, holding his radio. And you do when you're close. You can do it with just the portable, no antenna. You pull right against your chest, and you just turn very slow. And all of a sudden, oh, I don't hear it. I hear it. I don't hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Come back again. I don't hear it. It's coming from that way. You can listen to the input, but we just signal to your repeater when people are talking. And um, that's when I was first. I'd go outside and say, okay, I know. Rich is on the air. I can hear him on the input. I go outside and go, yep, I know Rich lives that way. That's where he is. Yep, it absolutely worked. I know where Rich lives. And that's right behind me is pointing towards Rich's house six miles away from me. So it's always behind you. I come up with this thing, tree fade. And I learned this being out in the woods when I got so confused. The body fade wasn't working right. I was close to it. Or I couldn't get a good direction because your signals will bounce off trees, off rocks, and I find a big tree in the woods, and I'll take the antenna off, okay, it's going, and I will hold this against the tree because it's a big mass, and I'll stop holding it and walk around the tree, and all of a sudden it disappears. I come out the other side, and I hear it again, I go back, it's that way, now I know, and I'll walk that way towards the signal, and then, okay, I'm going to pick it again, where is it, did I get a reflection? And it was that way, but when I got down, it, it moved it a little bit more this way because I'm getting closer, it's getting stronger. You know, I've got to go off frequency or I'm on the third.
the backyard any way, any way you're going. I think the video you had there with the person, the white feet is backward. It's what? It's backward. No, it's a direction behind you. It, oh. it does when you look at it and you first look at okay. that video. All right. Um, this. So the reason for doing the null rather than the loud signal is the loud signal is a really broad range. It all sounds the same. Yeah. The null is pretty narrow. That's how we doing for time here. We're doing pretty good. Um, there's a couple videos that we do, and then we'll just do a couple questions here. We'll see how this all works. This is Bob. Bob's in his car. He sent me this video, so I'm picking on him. Oh, we still got a little problem here. No, that, that's the uh, third harmonic antenna that you see on the PVC and the dish right here. Right, so we've got to go and get it somewhere. Would be my guess. All right. Bring to the next signal. See if I can triangulate a point. What about over there, maybe? Well, it's going this way, though. Yeah, you have to go too far away. There's a vector. I talked to myself. Right, uh, you one put a GoPro in his head? So he's got open squalls, so he has any little problem. Maybe I can do that. I just took the antenna off. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hear it getting louder? Hear it? All of a sudden you get a high. See, that's an open antenna, and it just, that's all I'm using right there. The signal is bouncing inside his dish, absorbing it. Yeah. See how clear it got? He wants you want to walk towards that signal. In this direction, what he's coming. Alright, let's see what I can find over here and then I'll go the other way. He was cursing. Uh, well the snow gets a lot of reflection. Alright, I mean standing this way. So let me get between these trees. Trying to train What I'm gonna do now is between all these trees. Oh, there's the box. That's funny. All right. Well, I'm going to get between all the trees, John. Oh. Hear how loud it is now? It is. All right. There we go. I think I'm filming. Oh, I'm filming. <coughs> yep, I'm filming. Hi, everybody. There's the boss. And there is the place. Bad boy put it. What's going on with you putting it in the cemetery? Uh, put in some of that. I did that once too. Um, it, it, this is one that I want to start. What are you using right now? Whoa! I, I've got no meters. No, but what what frequency? This is when we did the kit build about four or five years ago and it snowed half a foot that afternoon. Engineering calibration. <laughs> I'm gonna jump this up. It's an old, it's an old receiver. <laughs> Engineering calibration. Yeah. Okay, I'm huh? I'm jumping it because it was set so long. You could go in there. <laughs> possibility. That's a gate back there. Huh? I said there's a gate. You don't have to climb over anything. Took about half an hour to finally get close enough. Younger people walk faster than I do. He drives fast though. <laughs> well, I'll go in here just to say, see if it's in here, but this kind of, this one where, where the glasses the are frustrated. He doesn't have the audio up on his radios. He's basically using the signal meter, right? Yeah. You were just watching the little meter on his portable for the highest mm -hmm. signals. I'm pointing to it. It's down between the tree and the in the shed. Oh, I, I, I see between the tree and the shed. Yeah. Okay. This poor guy doesn't yeah. know that. I, it's over here someplace. I think it's right there. <laughs> Thank you. 
here right here in Max Sickle. But it, it's funny, knowing where it is, and you just watch somebody walk around, you know, and you, hit, you know where you hit it. What I should do, it could be a... <laughs> it could be the reflection. Yeah. You found it. Ah, it's right down there. Yeah. Wait, what did well, you know what's funny? At? What is he looking at? My yeah, my the hidden box. It was down beside the tree. Um, yeah, but you said he wasn't using audio. You, you, you can't hear it like before. It wasn't yeah. going beep 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 beep. It wasn't doing. He turned the volume. He just turned the volume. He was looking at a little scale on his portable. The scale got higher. He knew it was in that direction. Wait, wait, Look, I'm getting a max signal over here. Yeah. Oh, you know why? Look, the tree. It's reflecting right off of it. So but, no, but it, but it's Yagi. It's the right distance. Measure that distance, and you're getting a reflector here. So for no, we had all kinds of stuff with that. Um, just to talk about harmful interfer interference is how we got started. You triangulate the signals, plot it on a map. You narrow it down to a location. You can get closer using a portable body fade without the antenna. You can be in your car, drive by, be near a location. You're still going to pick it up. Whatever, if you're having a problem, report it to the repeat, repeater owners. But don't handle it yourself. If you come down and you found some pro somebody has a problem or an issue, it's not your job. It was fun to be the one to go find it. Now you tell, it's the repeater, repeater owner's responsibility to handle the person, repeat, whatever's involved, if there's an issue with anything, because that's they, they're licensed on that repeater to handle it itself. Um, they, they contact the FCC. Whatever they want to do is, is how it is. So that is it. We'll go with a few minutes of questions, because we only have two minutes. Because we're supposed to get out of here, quarter of them, we're policing ourselves. So any questions about anything? Anybody get any, anything good out of it? Yeah, it's very helpful. Yeah, it's it's fun to do. Um, yeah, the, the, this dish of blocks, you can just do a little bit of explain what he has here. Real quick, if we got two minutes. Basically, uh, we were having too much fun fox hunting, and I was getting frustrated because of the uh, issue with signal. Now, some people were good at body fade, and others are not. <laughs> So I come up with, we uh, had to replace an attic fan in the attic, so I re all I needed to do was replace the motor. So this dish was the top of the attic fan, took it off, it was in the back, my wife used it for a bird feeder. I needed a reflector of some kind, and here it was. So I just bought a two meter, it's basically two meters all the way up to 1296 megahertz, put it here in the middle of the dish, beat it up to a fundamental right here, and this is the third harmonic. So I, I have the fundamental third harmonic that, he, that John was showing you a minute ago. And I just tune it this way. So I, on the fundamental, I get it up close enough. So off of 565, I go 570, all the way up to 580. And by the time I do 580, I can actually do this, taking the antenna off. You were asking about an apartment building. Yeah. And you can literally just tune it like this. Now, the box is out here. You can do that if you put it in the parking lot. And uh, this is the third harmonic. So once you're within 10 feet, third harmonic's great. But the trouble, and the reason it is, because you're in the woods, and there's just all the trees and the rocks and granite and everything else. So you really do need the third harmonic at that point. Or in an apartment building, that would also be useful you know, to do that. And we got one guy here that lives in Lowell at the time that had a little one, a little one like that, and had it in the front yard, and we had to go find it. And uh, there were Reflection City, and that was a good one. And so we found it. So, anyhow, any questions on that? Are there any opportunities to do this this weekend? Or yes, can we come? Okay. If you take your portable, and you'll see the signs up, 144. Okay. 565 is the main frequency okay. on your portable. Press the tone to the key the mic, push number two, and let go, and you'll hear pee, it'll come on. Okay. It's tone activated. And you can just start body fading, go out in the parking lot, and just say, oh wow, I can hear that, and it disappears right behind me, and just start going close. Go off frequency a little bit more, because then you get, it's harder, the closer you get, you gotta be further off frequency. 
See if you can find it. There's a little sign-in book. I'll give you a hand if you want. Don't, okay. don't you. You want me to find it. So. These guys saw me out there. <laughs> in fact, John, i got to tell you, I, I think So you pointed in the direction? People. No, it's six people. You, you, you got to have a fracture of you. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any radio orienteering clubs in the area? No. Yeah. No, radio orienteering clubs? Well, radio orienteering. It's like ABRF. That's well, there is, a, there is the one for, you know, Fox, uh, not Fox hunting and such, but it's the... Uh, Direction climbing, yeah. but it's it's not reorienting. It's, no, yeah, it's too bad. But it no. is. No. There is well, in a way there is. We've got Vadim uh, down. Um, he's uh, he's he's Russian, but he's American now with an American call. But I can't remember his call right now. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Can you R -L -I, something like that? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Him. You're 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 in, the, you're in the ballpark. Yeah, I think that would be it. Uh, he's really good. Now he does all the world competitions and all the other things, and they're a two meter AM and uh, eighty meter. Um, yeah. you know. and he does occasionally do training in the Boston area. Yes, he does. We we have them in Franklin County. We have a couple of foxes a year in Franklin County, in Western Mass. Oh, do you? Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm really bad. But we do you, you gotta. You, do them more. I mean, you yeah. can do, pull one out for the weekend and now say, hey, it's out there. And, you know, I leave mine out now that they can do it Monday through Friday. Well, we use the whole county. It's there. Oh, you do the long distance one? We, it's long distance and it's out in the wilderness and yeah. by the But, but try one. Really go to a conservation. A lot of go to a conservation land and go 200 feet down the path, go 100 feet left to right. Tie it to a tree, put some sticks around it, turn it on, and say, "Hey, now just go here. This is fun." If you bring somebody says, "Okay, I'm just going to go here. I got to go. I got to go find this thing now and walk right up to it." It's the different aspects of doing. You don't have long distance is good, but if you want to do those real quick ones, you can find things in 15 minutes. I've had three or four of them up at the same time. I put in two in the same conservation lane on two different frequencies, two meter or 70 centimeter, and it can you can do that. But that's it. Everybody's got to, uh, any more questions? I'll be outside in a little while, but I'm going to let the next folks come in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting.